Hello and welcome back to another video. And in today's video, we are going to be doing a another content gap for environment tutorials. Oh, okay, I guess I'll do it again. So the last time I did an environment tutorial, uh, you guys really liked it. So I'm doing it again. Just going to delete the default cube and add in a plane. We are going to be making a canyon in Blender. And we are going to be using some really interesting techniques for that. Scale this up about 50 times and apply all the transformations. If you don't know how to do any of this, you can apply the transformation by pressing Ctrl and A and you get this menu and you can just uh, select all transforms. Next thing we can do is just add a material and call this canyon because we are going to be making a canyon and make sure you go over to cycles gpu and set the feature set to experimental we're going to be using that uh, right now so go over to the shader editor and enable the rendered view just adding a sun lamp so we can see what we're doing we are going to be adding uh, some uh, displacement to this so we need the sun lamp to see the displacement so the first thing we need to do is just add in a displacement and just put it into this displacement output right now nothing happens that's because we don't have any geometry so we are going to be adding fake geometry and that's why we had to change our feature set to experimental we are going to be adding a subdivision surface setting this to adaptive subdivision and simple so we still have the square but it's adaptive subdivision right now what we can do is add in a musgrave texture and just place that into the height just place that into the height the height to the height and in your material we still have to enable uh, displacements of course i forgot that so there we have it we have displacement and bump and our mesh is getting displaced and this works like any other displacement let's just set this to 20 and then we can start um, playing with the textures but before i do that sometimes i wish i could just experience my environments or showcase my art well with our sponsor frame you can do just that frame vr allows you to bring in your own 3d models as glb from blender and it is an amazing way of meeting up with friends showcasing art and much more it's a multi-user platform with support for up to 300 people at once it's accessible right away via a link uh, you can join via desktop mobile vr a samsung frame even it's free and very easy to get started after that you can just hop right into a frame and then explore the world you can learn more over at learn.frame.io and you'll be helping me out a ton let's get back to the video so i just had a look around all the textures and i think the musgrave works best so now we can just uh, crank down the crank up the detail and change the dimension down a little bit so we get this really rough texture uh, something like one uh, we can change the height to like 15 maybe. With the add node, we can uh, kind of place the geometry up a little bit. So I guess if we just uh, do 0.5 higher, we can then clip some that's under the origin point. So this will be flat right here. Maybe just set this to 0.25. And then what we can do is just multiply this. Just multiply these values together and we get this really cool effect. And if we hit clamp, uh, everything will become flat like this. So 0.25 works well. We can also add a color ramp here to get the same effect. And this works a little bit better. So yeah, this is, uh, I think, my setup. Just 0.25 here. And the rest is flat. And now we can uh, go over to the principled BSDF and actually add in the material. So for the color, I was thinking a noise texture and then adding in a mapping node and texture coordinate node. We can just um, preview this, change uh, the texture coordinate to object and then just change the Z scaling to kind of stretch this out. Change this to like 25 and we have these nice lines along the mountains. Now we can add in a mix node. Set that to color and then just choose two of our colors. Something orangey and a little bit yellowy. We can always add in a hue and saturation node for some finer controls. 
this material will be available on my Gumroad under the monthly support. As always, I'll be posting everything I make there. And that's our landscape. It's really cool. Uh, it doesn't actually use any geometry. We just have uh, four vertices, uh, but the texture does everything. So it's fully procedural. It's really cool. But the next thing we want to do is just add in a plane, scale it up again, same uh, size, and then just move it up a little bit to uh, somewhere right here. And this will be our water material. So add in a water, and then just add in a bump node, really making just a really simple water material. If you've never, never done this, uh, please just follow along. It's not really that complicated. We add in a bump node, a musgrave texture, and plug the height into the height, and change the scaling to something like 100 for this, or 200. Yeah, 200 works fine. Crank up the detail and set the dimension to about one. This really gives uh, some really cool details. I change the strength down a little bit. We don't really need that much uh, depth. Now set the transmission to one. And it should look like this. We can add some color to the water. I want a really azure blue uh, turquoise uh, cyan type deal. So this is really cool. And we can extrude it down. Change the roughness down. 2.1 or maybe even less and what we're looking for is um, some really deep colors in the water so what we can do as well is just add in a emission to the volume and just copying the color uh, but setting the strength uh, really low something like this maybe some uh, different undertone add in a really cool HDRI that really adds to the scene, of course, as always. Uh, I am using the PSA add-on. Catch some cool shadows on the water and on the mountains and place down your camera. For this one, I recommend a more top-down view. Uh, I really don't do that too much, uh, but for this one, uh, I think that works well. But of course, this is all up to you. For the render, you might want to set our plane, our original plane, uh, the dicing scale uh, down a little bit. Uh, less means uh, more resolution, by the way, just so you know. If you're struggling with the rendering, you can just set this to, uh, uh, well, not this, but um, like 10 maybe. But uh, for me, I can just crank it up all the way. Doesn't really matter. And now we are just finishing up. Some finishing touches, maybe touching up the lighting a little bit. This looks really cool. We can also add in a fog cube if you really want, just to move it up by one and then just scale it the same amount we did with our planes and just move it up so it covers the scene. So normally what you would do is just add in a volume scatter node like you learned from me or uh, an emission node even and just set this uh, 2.1 and call it a day. But what we're going to be doing now is adding in uh, some noise textures. So a noise texture and a musgrave texture. Because what's doing now is just having a density of 0.01 everywhere. But that's not really realistic. So we want to um, make it a little bit more noisy by adding these textures and mixing them together. I think you can do that this way. Uh, something like this. Yeah, it's a control shift and a right click. And you can mix them together. Add in a mapping node of course otherwise they will stretch it's not really good to have so something like this and just add in a math node and click divide set this to about 10 and then you can put it into the density give it a cool color of course and set the anisotropy to 0.9 this will really impact the render time but if you can i would really recommend you do this because it would uh, it adds a lot to your scene so yeah i hope you enjoyed um and i'll put my render on screen now you can of course download everything in this video on my comrade. Please like and subscribe, uh, leave a comment, a nice one this time. And I'll see you in the next one.